worked in North Carolina with some kids. I worked in a kindergarten classroom. Um, so when I moved back to Ohio, I knew that I wanted to be with kids. Last year was my first school year. Um, so I think just ending the school year and seeing where these kids started and where they ended up, I think is a huge accomplishment and watching just everything that they exceeded all these expectations and that so many kids were ready for kindergarten. Um, it was awesome to see. Um, and just, I mean, daily here, like I said, watching them kind of go through and learn all of these things, I feel like is so awesome to see. I was a Head Start parent. Um, I've been here 27 years. So 28 years ago, my uh, youngest daughter was here at Head Start and uh, I got uh, recruited by a teacher because I kept volunteering at the school anyways. If you have that heart for patients with children and working with families and it just being an advocate for that, that right there is a plus. If you have that in your heart and you have the love for it, you know, join the program because it's well worth it. So I was approached and asked if I would be interested in a management position within the Head Start program. I eagerly accepted. I had just finished my degree in business. I started and drank the Kool-Aid quickly. It uh, wasn't very long after starting here that I knew this was something magical. What I love the most about working for Head Start is the most obvious thing is earning a paycheck helping people. That's a very rewarding thing to do. Uh, the second thing that comes to my mind is the improvements that our services make in family and children's lives. We're just such a kind-natured program that wants really good things for people who have fallen on potentially some hard times and just need some cheerleaders and some advocates. And so uh, it's a pretty honorable thing to do is to help make positive impacts in families' lives. I'd say definitely the students attracted me to Head Start, uh, just wanting to work with the students. And um, once I started doing that, because it was recently after I graduated, um, I started really enjoying not just working with the age group specifically, the preschool age group, but also interacting with the families and being more involved with the families too. They're very good at reaching out and communicating and kind of setting up uh, events and uh, staff meetings for us to improve with professional development, whether it's uh, music and movement. We had something called I'm Moving, I'm Learning recently, where we learned about uh, vocabulary, giving the students a lot of different vocabulary for like verbs and movements and actions and just incorporating uh, music and movement more into our daily uh, schedule. They give us a lot of options too with what we want to pick to learn about. Like we get to choose what we learn about for professional development, like prioritizing certain sessions like fire safety. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, options they offered to us uh, to help prepare us uh, professionally. I think you're going to be very fulfilled if you decide to work here. Um, it is, like I said, the school family is incredible. The, the kids make it worth it every single day. Um, some advice, I mean, you do have to have a work-life balance. Like, you can't take all of this stuff home with us every day. I mean, there's a lot. It's, it's emotional sometimes. I have a little guy. Um, we'll just call him Tommy. And when I first met him, uh, he was nonverbal. And it just felt like kind of nobody was home. When you would talk to him, he wouldn't really respond. He wouldn't talk um, through our services through different screenings and assessments we did and worked with his parents. We were able to refer him out um, and come to find out that he had very little hearing um, and he needed glasses. So he needed not only tubes in his ears, but he couldn't see and he couldn't hear, right? Um, so we ended up, parents followed through, we helped them through that process. That was hard, but in this instance, Tommy just couldn't see or hear. And so probably about nine months after I had first met him, um, I met him again and he came up to me and he said, Miss Amber, you like my haircut? And I about fell on the floor because nine months previously, this child, there was nobody home. This child was not responding to my, to my engaging him or nothing. And um, Tommy is one of my favorite. I have pictures on my desk and I remember 
um, you know, when days are hard or stressful, I look at that and I remind myself um, the power of what we do here and, and exposure to um, different things and, and help and cheerleading and helping that family um, understand that it's not necessarily that their son was delayed, but being quiet about the problem wasn't going to help him either. We do a very good job of using like the whole family. It's not just about the kids. Um, we have family advocates that can go out to families. They can help them get services that they need. We are so more involved with the parents. You know, when you get to the public schools, you know, it's, there's not that connection where we have that connection. We do that um, parent involvement. Um, which is important to help the families feel involved. Um, we do parent-teacher conferences. We go into the home. We do home visits two times a year with all of the families. Um, so that kind of helps us build a relationship with the parents that like some of their schools might not have. Most of the time they're dropping them off and they're leaving them there and then they just go home at the end of the day. Um, we do class dojos so we're communicating with the families all day. Um, if anything ever comes up, we try to be super communicative about it with them. Um, and I think that that helps build the relationships and then both the parents and the kids I feel like have a better experience. Staff is super, super helpful, super supporting. Um, Families are great to work with here. We are a big family. Um, not only my school family, you know, like we're just a big family. I love these kids. Um, the families are really awesome. Um, all Everyone that we work with is so great, all the way up to the highest management. Um, everyone does a really good job and their heart is in it. We call ourselves a school family and we take that serious. We care about each other and we care about the children and the families in our program. Lots of bonds with children. Lots of um, I love yous, you know what I mean? As a teacher, when a child tells you I love you and you know, okay, I love you too. But, you know, you get that close connection and you, you really truly love, you truly love all these children. The biggest difference I see from other um, private or public preschool uh, is the family engagement aspect. So we know and we believe that if a family unit is not well, a child cannot come to school um, and be focused on education. So if there's domestic violence, incarceration, addiction, if there's any of those things going on, if there's threats of eviction or disconnect notices, all of those things 100% impact a child's ability to come to school um, and to be focused and ready to learn for the day. And so as we're preparing children for kindergarten, we understand and value that if things aren't well at home, that's not going to happen and we care about that. And we do see some heavy stuff sometimes and you have to, um, at the end of the day, you have to make things best for the kids. Um, that is why you're here and that is why you need to kind of take a step away of some things, like your own feelings that you might be feeling um, because at the end of the day, you have to help these kids and you have to create a safe place for them here. The reality of our society is that both schools and businesses operate on middle class values, uh, not necessarily the values that everyone is born with or know. Uh, so I think it's important that um, the compassion, empathy, uh, wanting to really seek to understand what the situation, what's happening and, and uh, how we can be helpful. I mean, obviously you're working with kids, you kind of have to have a little pep in your step. <laughs> um, you have to get up and dance and do all the things, like no child is gonna wanna come up and be like, oh, if you're just sitting there, like they're not gonna get excited. So you have to be super excited. And I know it can be hard every day, but like I said, when you walk in here, when they're all smiling and saying good morning, like that helps me just be like, okay, it's a new day, we got this, we can do it. A, a lot of it is like the things the kids will tell you, like the things they'll say, like um, they'll uh, just tell you about like what they're doing at home with their families or they'll talk about like they'll just kind of mention like things you've taught them in lessons or like during group times whatever it is they'll they'll bring it up and they'll mention it or they'll do like hand motions like when we're teaching them the letters and it's just that's like so satisfying to see them do it especially authentically when it's authentic and they're like reading books or working whatever it is that they're doing, like free play, just seeing them pick up on those things and do them and see that progress that they're learning um, is great. The genuineness that goes in, the care that we provide and the, the positive things that we want to do, it not only impacts the child, their family, us as um, adults um, and our coworkers and our work-life balance, uh, but the positive changes we make for our families also trickle down into our communities. Uh, that's what makes it really special.